Okay, algebra 2, this is 4.5. This is completing the square. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off here with this idea of what is a perfect square. Um, guys, these things here, a plus 2, the quantity a plus 2 squared, and the quantity x minus 3 squared, they are perfect square binomials, which means it's something times itself. So if you remember that this truly would be a plus 2 times a plus 2. And then, of course, then you can FOIL this. And if you remember, you know, FOILing is first, outside, inside, last. You can do that. Now, we also, I'm hoping that we start to remember that a plus b squared is equal to a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. And so, if we use this, I should be able to erase this here and say, okay, let's follow the pattern. A up in here, A here is A, B is a 2. So truly, I am going to just fill in a pattern like so, where A, A, B, B. So it's A, A, because those were my A's, and B was 2, 2, 2. So I get A squared plus 4A plus 4. The cool thing about it is that it still works here. It's just that you, I like to think of it, I'm not trying to remember more than one formula, that this is really like adding a negative 3. So if you think about it, this is adding a negative 3. So therefore, that's A and that's B. So if I say, hey, it's something squared plus 2 times something times something plus something squared, A is now X and B is negative 3. And so I get x squared. And now this you have to watch out for. This is 2 times negative 3, which is a minus 6x. And then when you square a negative, it does become positive. And so now these, a squared plus 4a plus 4, and uh, x squared minus 6x plus 9, those are called perfect square trinomials. So... Guys, these are related. Now let's take a look at how they're related. They're related from the fact that this number 2 inside and this number 4a. What about this one at negative 3, negative 6? So, the key is half. This number, look, is half. Negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3. 4 divided by 2, 2. So, when we get to something like this, and I've got to find the missing value, actually, let's go back here one more time. The connection between this 2 and this 4 is that I have to square it. Negative 3 and 9, look, it's negative 3 squared. It's 2 squared. So whatever this number is here gets squared to get your constant at the very end. But to get to the number inside, you have to take the half of b. Guess what? 8 is b. So if I want to find the value of c, I'm going to have to work kind of that back and forth a little bit like we just did and say I'm going to take half of 8 and then square it. Because C guys, C equals 1 half of B oops, squared. And so if I'm doing these problems half of 8 squared which is 4 squared which is 16. So C is equal to 16. 16 
if I put that in for C, will make it a perfect square trinomial. It's a perfect square trinomial because I should be able to write it as A plus B squared, which would be a perfect square binomial. Now, when I say A and B, in this case, A is the X, and guess what B is? The thing that we squared right there. It's 4. So technically, this problem up here could be factored to X plus 4 squared. If you don't believe me, foil it out. Put X plus 4 times X plus 4, foil it out, you will end up with this problem, but C being 16. So it doesn't matter if you have positives. If I don't have positives, they come out to be not so nice numbers. It still can be completed or um, find the missing value of C. So half of negative 11 is that needs to be squared. Now half of 11 is 5.5. So you're dealing with a negative 5.5, and then you would square it. It will become positive. I highly suggest that you keep it as a fraction. And so if you remember how to square a fraction, you square the top, you square the bottom. So you get 121 over 4. That is C. And if you wanted to write it as a binomial, then you would have x minus 11 over 2 squared. Because this number inside here is the number that goes inside the parentheses. And that's kind of good to know because our next page here is the actual steps for completing the square. And I kind of explained that and I'll explain through the steps as well. So write these down. So completing the square has steps. I want you to separate your x's from all else. There are things that have x's and there are things that don't have x's. Separate them to each side of the equal sign. Our job to do this efficiently is to make sure a is equal to 1. That leading coefficient has to be a 1. If it's not, then we are going to divide everything by a. So divide everything by a if it is not. It means every term on both sides. Very important. Then, once we have that, I can add something to both sides. I'm going to add that 1 half b squared number, that C value that we found. And I'm going to show you the trick on this so that we can easily factor the side that has X's and then we just simplify by putting together common denominators, etc. on the other side. And then you square, uh, solve by taking square roots. And don't forget that you have to put plus or minus in front of your square root anytime you're taking a square root. So, our first problem, a is equal to 1. So, I'm going to start off with a little bit easier problem. The next problem will have a not be 1. So, as you can see, there are x's on this side and some numbers. So, I'm going to get the 12 to go to the other side to get the x's by themselves. So, I'm going to subtract 12. So, I get x squared minus 4x equals negative 12. Yes, I did this on purpose. I left the space. Because I can, once I've realized that a is by itself, or a is equal to 1, sorry, here, then I know that I'm ready to add something to both sides, that, which was, I think, step 3. Add half of b squared to both sides. So b is negative 4, so half of negative 4 is negative 2. And I'm going to write, look at this, I'm going to write it as negative 2 squared on the side that has my variables. But what is negative 2 squared? Negative 2 squared is 4. Okay. So, the reason is, I leave it in with the negative 2 squared here is because remember what I talked about in that first slide, that negative 2, which is half of b, is the thing that goes inside the factor. So when I write this, it's going to be x minus 2 because, I'm going to change colors so we can highlight this, that negative 2 is the number inside. And then I did say, just to simplify as you go, negative 12 
plus 4 is negative 8. Now we just have to solve. You solve by taking the square root. I want to get x's by themselves. To do that, I have to get rid of the square. So if I square root and square root, I have to have plus or minus. The square and the square root will cancel each other out. So I end up with plus or minus the square root of negative 8. Now, if you remember back to what we talked about on the last lesson, or in the lesson with the quadratic formula, quadratics have two solutions, one solution, or no solution, or no real solutions. They're too imaginary. They became imaginary because of the negative 8. You're taking a square root of a negative number. And so we would have to fix that. So I'm going to leave this side alone. And I'm going to change it to the square root of 8i because I don't like negatives. I can take the i. Poke an i out is the I like to say. I learned that from another math teacher. Poke an i out. And then you have to actually ask yourself, is 8 fully reduced? And if you think about it, 8 is 2 and 4, 2 and 2. If you're talking about square roots, you still need that partner. So therefore, there are two twos. And so you could have x minus 2 equals plus or minus 2 square root 2i. Because the 2's here get to walk out, and there are the ones out front, and you're still left with a 2 inside. To get x by itself, I add 2 to both sides. Now it's very important that this 2 that you added here goes in front. So it equals 2 plus or minus 2 square root 2i. And that is how you would complete the square. So completing the square is another way, just like the quadratic formula, just like graphing, to solve quadratics. Now here's the cool thing. Completing the square when done right never lies to you. You will be able to find the answers, whether they're real or imaginary. Quadratic formula will be able to find the solutions, whether they're the real or not. They don't lie, as long as you do it right. Graphing, not the most accurate way to solve a quadratic. Now, notice that this one, this example, a is not equal to 1. And so, going through the steps, I'm still going to isolate or get the x's by themselves. And notice I did not leave myself room this time. I did not leave myself room because I noticed that 3 was not equal to 1. So I got to go through and divide both sides by 3. So I get x squared minus 2x. Now I know that I have a equal to 1. So I left myself space to add something to both sides. Because remember, when you add to one side, you have to add to the other. Then I can say, hey, I can take half of b. Half of negative 2 is negative 1, but I will square it. And negative 1 squared is 1. So this is actually going to turn out kind of nice. The left-hand side becomes x minus 1 because that negative 1 is the one that goes in the factor. And 3 plus 1 is 4. Square root, square root. Don't forget there's a plus or minus. x minus 1 equals plus or minus. The square root of 4 is a 2. Very nice. I'm still going to add 1 over, and it has to go in front. So x equals 1 plus or minus 2. But these are both nice numbers. So therefore, I can do 1 plus 2 and 1 minus 2. And 1 plus 2 is 3, and 1 minus 2 is negative 1. You have now found the two zeros. You found the two solutions to the quadratic where it crosses the x-axis. So therefore, they are also the x-intercepts. Homework. Your homework are the problems that are here. The first two, I just want you to find the value of c and write it as that perfect square trinomial. So you have to state c equals, and then you should also have this thing where in the first problem it's x minus some value squared. And then 8 through 12, I want you to complete the square. I have three of them where a is equal to 1 and two of them where they're not equal to 1. So make sure to make it equal to 1. Have a great day.